Hello, Nintendo Wii here, welcome back to Retro Break. In this video, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the Retro Games Fair, which was just on in Leeds this past weekend, in the Marriott Hotel. We're going to start just here on the left of the entrance, where there was already quite a lot of tables selling some really cool stuff before you even got inside the main hall. So let's take a look at some of that now. As you can see on the shelf behind this stall, they were selling a lot of really nice condition consoles. There was a really nice turquoise N64 there, which I really wanted. They also had a few boxes of Mega Drive games and a few Master System games there too. And the stall next to them on the left, they were actually showing off an Amiga and I think he was also fixing one as well by the looks of it. They also had some Amiga magazines, which we'll get to see in a second. You can also see here that they were selling some ZX Spectrum games in the front and a few PS2 and PS1 games and random bits and pieces. I did also have a look at the Amiga magazines, I was flicking through them for quite a while. All really interesting stuff. So now we get a bit of so now we get a bit more footage of the Sega Saturn and N64 games. There's not really many PAL Sega Saturn games left for me to get that I really want. Same with the N64 really. I would have liked to pick up that Magical Tetris challenge, but unfortunately I kind of ran out of money by the time I got back round to this point. There's also some box SNES games in there as well, I saw a few good ones. I think I spotted Secret of Mana in there, which is really good. And we're moving across a bit now, and here's some Game Gear games. Unfortunately, my Game Gear is broken at the minute, but I guess I could have spent a bit longer looking, because I am trying to either get a new one or try and fix my existing one. But it doesn't really seem like they had anything super exciting there. Let me know in the comments if you see anything interesting. One thing that really caught my eye in this folder here was Snow Bros on the front, on the, uh, front there, and also Turrican on the one behind it. I will be doing a pickups video next weekend, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already, and that'll definitely be up next Friday. Uh, I did pick up some really cool things, so I'm really excited to show them off, but I actually want to try and capture footage for them all as well, so it might take a bit of time. And in this box here, we have some NES games. Unfortunately, they're all in plastic wrapping, which is kind of blocking the titles. And there we have a lot of Dreamcast games as well. Some really good ones in there. I spotted Toy, Toy Racer, that's a really good game. There was uh, Tony Hawk and a few N64 games. The nice gold cart of Ocarina of Time, which I actually don't have. All I have is the original grey cart. That's a kind of sad story, but maybe that's for another day. And this store here, this one was selling mostly anime figures and a few PS4 games there. There's Dragon Quest Heroes, Shenmue, I think I saw Star Ocean. And that's basically the end of that, so now we're turning left and heading into the main hall. As you can see, it was incredibly busy. This store here on the left, i come back to it in a little bit, that one was full of Japanese retro games. Really exciting to have a look around there. Um, I. I picked up one game from that store actually, you'll see it in my video next week. And this one here in the centre, this one was selling some Nintendo DS games. Nothing too exciting, Lost in Blue 2, that's one that I'd like to get at some point. Also some GameCube games and original Xbox back there as well. Ah, oh, I think I just spotted a game that I actually wanted there for the DS, Boulder Dash. So, yeah, not Boulder Dash, I forgot it, Boulder Dash is the game I wanted to get. So here's a closer look at that Japanese game store really really fun to look through they have so many games here just a crazy amount pretty much everything you could possibly want unfortunately after having been to japan a few times i did find it to be kind of on the pricey side but i guess you'd expect that as you know they have to bring it all back here and stuff but still really cool to have a look around they did actually have a few boxes of pc engine games both uh, Hue cards and CD games. They also had a load of Dreamcast games, Japanese Dreamcast games, and some Mega Drive ones, which I'm having a look through here. If you know, if you notice any games here that are really good, let me know, because these guys are at a lot of different events, so I'm sure I'll be able to uh, have another look through it all in the future. And there's some more Japanese Dreamcast games there, uh, Japanese Mega Drive games, sorry. So if you see anything you like the look of, let me know in the comments. And now some N64 and SNES cartridges. Um, again, with the SNES and N64, it's getting really hard to actually find new things to buy for it, just because I pretty much have everything already. And there's a few of the more expensive games at the back there, just panning across. You can see some really, really good games there. 
150 quid for Mega Man 7 on the SNES. Not sure if it's worth quite that much. It's one of the weaker Mega, Mega Man games. Sorry if I offended anyone. And there's some more boxed SNES and NES games there. Super Street Fighter 2, or Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and Super Star Wars. And another quick look at the cartridges there as well. So this store is always really cool to see. They always have some really rare games at the back there. Hopefully I managed to get a bit of a better look. You can see there Landstalker, Ristar, Splatterhouse 2, Shinobi 3, which is one that I always look at but never actually pick up. Maybe one day. I'm trying to get it for 50 quid though and I keep seeing it for either 55 or 60 and I know that's being really picky and I may as well get it but I'm always slightly hopeful that I'll find it for 50 and now we're on the other side of the hall here and there's some more SNES and N64 games and a load of GameCube games there in the box as well really good prices on them GameCube games actually maybe I should have picked a few up and a lot more Dreamcast games um, feel free to pause the video at any point if you want to have a look at the games. I have recorded it in 4K so hopefully it's really clear for you to actually see what I'm looking at here. And I'm just having a little bit of a flick through the Game Boy Advance games here, see if anything interesting catches my eye. I know they had a few of the Mega Man Battle Network games, there was Battle Network 3. Also spotted um, basically all the Mario Advance games which is really cool. Unfortunately there wasn't Oh yeah, another really interesting game that I saw was Jazz Jack Rabbit for the uh, Game Boy Advance. It was 20 quid, which I thought was kind of expensive just for a cartridge, but it would be really interesting to see uh, what Jazz Jack Rabbit looked like on the GBA. I only ever played the PC version back in the day. As you can see there, there's another Mega Man Battle Network game. And I can also see Battle Network Battle Chip Challenge, which is uh, apparently not very good. It's just the battles and none of the RPG elements, which is a bit of a shame. And now we're on a different stall, uh, with some just seemingly games displayed at random, no real order to them. Um, what did I spot there? Life Force on the NES, which is a game that I really want. Coaster Works on the Dreamcast, I remember downloading that one back in the day and playing it on a CD, CDR through the Dreamcast. Shouldn't really admit that. Also, there's a few loose SNES games there. There was Yoshi's Island. Um, all the stuff you'd expect, really. Tetris and Dr. Mario. Um, I didn't really spend too much time looking at the PS1 games because I'm not super interested in the PS1 at the moment, maybe in the future. But I suppose I was mostly on the lookout for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Um, a bit of Sega Saturn, but yeah, I picked up one Sega Saturn game, which I'll see in the next episode. There's some blue box Mega Drive games there, some really good ones, and the uh, the classic black box games as well. Zero Wing, that's one that I always want, mostly just for the meme. Uh, there was also some Duke Nukem games there. I will say one of the games that I picked up was Duke Nukem 3D for the N64, but unfortunately, when you've got as many games as me, you're bound to pick up a few duplicates, and it turns out I already had Duke Nukem 64, so... The one that I didn't have was Duke Nukem Zero Hour, and you can see why I kind of got confused because they look basically exactly the same. Here's some more box SNES games. Stunt Race FX is an amazing game, if you haven't played that one, highly recommend it. One of my very first racing games that I ever played, and it's very impressive, the use of the Super FX chip and stuff like that. There's also a few more rare games at the back there, I've slowed it down a little bit. There's Mega Man X5, Cooler World for the PlayStation original. Uh, that's a game that I really want to get at some point. I love the demo that was on one of the McDonald's game discs. And here's another box of boxes. Uh, games in boxes. And I actually caught this guy knocking loads of things over, so that was kind of funny. So, unfortunately, um, I felt a bit bad recording after that, so I turned it off pretty quick. Now, these Game Boy games here, they were basically giving these away. Um, like a pound each or something, so I picked up a big handful of original Game Boy games to add to my ever-growing Game Boy collection. I'm on about 200 games now for the UK Game Boy library, so almost there. There's an Atari original, and I think there was also a Neo Geo CD there as well, which is really cool. And um, what do we have here? Some Japanese SNES games, and a Commodore 64 in the box, and a ZX Spectrum and a ZX81 I think was there as well. Yeah, Spectrum Plus and an 81. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find any Commodore 64 games, which is something I was really looking out for. There was also a store here selling some retro magazines and random bits and pieces. And here's some more Japanese Mega Drive games. Surprisingly, there was quite a lot of Japanese Mega Drive games, considering the Mega Drive wasn't super popular in Japan itself, so it's always really cool to see. I love the box art on the Japanese Mega Drive games. Looks absolutely stunning. There was also a box down there with some loose NES games in. Um, and on this store here, I found two Atari Lynx games. Um, they were something that I was really looking out for. Um, I don't know if you've seen it already, but one of the first videos I did this year was my Atari Lynx pickups and sort of a review of the system. I actually managed to get a lot of games earlier this year for the Lynx and the console, so definitely on the lookout for some more games for that in the future. And there's uh, just a few more stalls to go in this area, then we'll have a quick look at the other side. So there was Lock and Chase for the Game Boy there, that's a game that I've been looking for for a long time. There's also some... Uh, yeah, I'd never seen this one before, but it turned out just to be a basketball game, so I put it back pretty quick. Um, yeah, there was loads of Game Boy games to flick through. They pretty much had every game you could possibly want here. It, although it's getting to the point now where there's only uh, very few Game Boy games that I can actually buy that are actually affordable. There was actually a few Neo Geo Pocket games in there, which was really cool to see. I didn't pick any up, but it's always nice to see something that's not just Game Boy or Game Boy Advance sort of thing. And once again, there was a few more of the rarer titles at the back there. I think I saw Shinobi X for the Sega Saturn. They were selling that for 100 I think. I'm not sure if that's good or not. And these guys here, Retro Mods, these guys are brilliant. I actually got a modded Sega Saturn from them at the last um, Retro Market I was at. And it's actually plugged in right now into a new CRT that I just got. So. Yeah, highly recommend Retro Mods. I'll put a link to their Facebook page in the description below. And here's a look at some of the more rare games there. There's Parodius on the NES, Probotector, Return of the Evil Forces, um, what else did I say? Terra Enigma, uh, 240, I think. Um, that's about how much I paid for my one, I think. So, not a cheap game, but absolutely worth it. Also, those signs there, I was super tempted to pick one up but I really didn't fancy carrying it all the way back on the train with me. And once again, here's a few more loose SNES and N64 games. Let me know if you see anything interesting down in the comments below. And some more Game Boy games for me to flick through. You can never have enough Game Boy games to flick through. That was another one that I'd never seen before. Not entirely sure what it was. Bubble and Ghost there that I just flipped past. That was That is a really, really fun game for the original Game Boy. Yeah, so just having a look at a few more there. Elevator Action, I'm kind of sad that I skipped through that one because that's a game that I've been looking for for a while. And there's a few more Neo Geo Pocket uh, and Pocket Color games down there on the bottom. And a few of the rarer SNES and N64 titles as well. And some PlayStation ones if you want to have a glance at some PlayStation games. Next time I go to one of these events I'll try and capture some more PlayStation and Xbox games just for people who aren't really that interested in just Nintendo stuff like me. So. Yeah, sorry about just the Nintendo content. I'll try and be a bit more open-minded at the next event, let's say that. This one was a really cool stall. They had loads of Japanese stuff, as you can see there on the shelf. Really exciting to look at all these things. They had a load of Japanese Saturn games, um, a whole load of uh, Atari 2600 games, and a few rarer titles at the back there. I just spotted Comic Zone. That's a game that I really want for the Mega Drive. I've actually only ever had the Windows 95 version of Comic Zone, and it is a really cool game. And there's some more Mega Drive and Sega Saturn games there. Let me know if you've spotted anything interesting. I just spotted uh, Lost Kingdoms 2 on the GameCube, that's really good. And it was going a bit too fast there. There was a very quick glance at some PS1 titles. You probably won't be able to make any of them out. There's Earthworm Jim 2 at the back there, and the original Mega Man. And we had a lot better box art than what America did, I can say that for sure. And here's a nice stall, selling a few 8-bit computers, and I did spot a few more Atari Lynx games in there as well. Um, I'd already got Crystal Mines, that's actually my favourite game on the system so far. I didn't actually pick the other one up though, although maybe I should have, because it's not very often that you get to see them in the box. That was really cool to see. There's Donkey Kong Country 2, Dragon's Lair, Wave Race 64. And another uh, card folder full of Game Boy games. That's always really cool. 
If I didn't have the display cabinet, I'd probably store my games like that. And some more Atari Lynx games as well. So there was actually quite a few. You just had to really try and hunt them down. They're not really on display that much. And behind here was some Mega CD games. Don't see too many Mega CD games around, so that's always nice to see. And now, just a quick look at the stalls in the corner here. There was nothing too exciting. I think this area was more for like kids that went to the event and wanted to buy like things and stuff. But there was a stall at the end that was selling some retro games, and they were also selling them little uh, arcade machine things that you saw there. And there was also a games room where you could just go and hang out, but it was really busy every time I tried to go in there, so I only got that little bit of footage there from the entrance. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the tour, so I really hope you enjoyed having a look at this event. If you ever want to go to it, I think this one's on once a year in Leeds. They also do something called the Super Retro Games Fair, and there's a lot more retro gaming events coming throughout the year, so Subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for loads more tours coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.